Hello, this is Jennifer Bailey and in this lecture I'm going to show you how to register a domain name and I'm going to take you step by step through the process with screen capture so you can see exactly what you need to do. But first a bit of background and though I have covered this in a previous lecture so you can go back and review the information I've previously done for you. A domain name is basically the web address of your website. For example, my web address is jennifersbailey.com and in order to get a domain name, you need to register it with a domain name registrar. Now there are many different registrars. I've put some links in the notes section so you can have a look at the different ones to see which one you prefer and also to compare prices. But they're all much pretty much the same. So even though I'm going to use GoDaddy as an example in this lecture, you'll be able to transfer that information to a different registrar if you prefer to use a different one. So here we are at the GoDaddy.com website. And like I said before, GoDaddy is a domain name registrar. So the first thing you need to do, and you'll probably find exactly the same options on a similar registrar's web page, you have a search bar. So where you can put in the type of domain name you're looking for. So for example, if I had a hairdresser called Cut Above, I could type in my domain name in here. Now you don't need the www dot, you just type in the words. And because we ideally want to get a top level domain, such as .com, I'm going to leave that as it's set there. Though if you want something different, you just click on the arrow and then some other options appear. So you can select a different extension if you prefer. You then click search. So as we can see, cutabove.com is already registered and some of the other options like .org is going for quite a bit of money. So we're thinking, OK, I can't get my first choice. And often you'll find that is the case because domain names are like Internet real estate in that some names carry a premium price tag. So the most popular, like I said, are top level domains such as .com. And especially if they carry really strong keywords or really good branding terms, you could pay quite a lot of money for them. But by using a bit of creativity, you can still get a domain that you're after. So if you go back to my previous lecture, I've actually made some suggestions of tips of things you can look for in order to get the domain name that you need or that you would desire to have. So also what you can do is if you scroll down the screen in the GoDaddy website, you'll see you've got an option here, similar options. So if you open that up, GoDaddy has made some suggestions for you, which you know might be better than what you had before. So chop above cut beyond. So what it's done is it's used words that are very similar in order to create a domain name. But obviously if that's the name of your hairdressing salon you're not really going to want to choose something else. But what you could do is add a keyword in. So if we had cut above hair dresser maybe. There we go click search again. So now you can have cut above hairdresser.com so that tells you exactly what your website is going to be about and you've also got the name of your brand in there. So that sounds an excellent domain name if you're going to be a hairdresser. So what you do next is you'll add it to your shopping cart. So I'm going to take you through the process. I'm not actually going to purchase it, but I'm going to take you through the process. So you then click add. It's now been added to the cart and you can see here it's been put in our order summary. So we click continue to check out. And now you have the option to add a private domain registration. I don't tend to choose this myself personally, but if you want to add it to your basket, then you will just put a check in this box here like so. And if you look here, you can have a look at the different prices and different options. Basically, what it means is if you have the private domain registration, no one can go and look up your name and your address when you register the domain name. I mean I've never had any problem personally with having unwanted mail or emails or anything that by not being private but it's entirely up to you whether you want to go that route. In the same way is I don't tend to add 
the certified domain either. So, but if you want it, just put a check in the box and then we click continue. You now have the option to add web hosting or web building. Now we're not going to use GoDaddy for our web hosting, so just leave those empty. And also we're not going to add any emails because with the hosting package that I'm going to suggest you go for, you can get as many email addresses as you wish with no extra cost. So click continue again. OK. So now what you need to do is decide how long you want to register your domain for. So if you notice, GoDaddy has by default set it as five years. Now, depending on the likelihood of you wanting to keep that name for a long time, if it's the name of your business, then probably registering it for a longer period of time is a good thing. If it's you're building a niche website and you want to see how it goes and you don't really want to commit yourself long term, then click on the drop down arrow and change the number of years that you wish to register it for. So you'll notice if I change it to one year now, you'll see that the total will update. So it's only going to cost me four pounds. Also, there's a small fee that's added and so you can see what your total is going to be four pound and two p the next thing you want to do is obviously to pay for this so we're going to go to the checkout now this is the point where if you have already bought from godaddy which i'm assuming you haven't you will need to sign up for account now i have got an account with godaddy but i'm not going to sign in with my username and password so i'm going to click on the sign up now and you can see you just need to fill in some basic information so for example first name last name email now anything with a red asterisk is mandatory that you fill in so you have to fill it in and it won't let you proceed to the next screen unless you've completed those so what I'm going to do, because I do have an account, I'm going to log in now so you can see how the checkout looks. So I'm now logged in and because I've used it before, my details are in the screen. So all you need to do now is choose how you're going to pay for your domain name. So whether you're going to use a um, credit card or whether you can use something like uh, money bookers, which is sort of a bit like PayPal. In order to enter your payment details, you just select which method you want to pay with. So if it's credit, debit and prepaid card, you click here. Or if it's in money bookers, it's just here. So if I click on the credit or debit prepaid card option, you can see you are now able to add in your card number, your name on your card, etc. So when you've completed those, you then click place your order. So to recap this lecture, by now, after seeing that step by step, you should now know how to register a domain name. And if you go away now, go and have a look at the domain name registrars links that I put in the notes section. Go and get yourself a domain name. And then in the next lecture, I'll show you how to get web hosting for your website. I'm Jennifer Bailey. Thank you very much for listening.